Hey, there it is. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our May. It's already May. May Photo Focus Lightroom Hangout. Uh, this is a really fun one for me because I'm really learning some new stuff here. So really excited to have Rob Knight on as our special guest with my old pal Levi, who's our regular person here. Um, so before we get started, we'd like to give a big uh, thanks to our sponsors for this month. So thanks to Adobe uh, for, hey, for making Lightroom, or else we couldn't have this thing at all. So uh, super psyched to have them on uh, for this. Song Freedom, who's been a really big supporter uh, all through, geez, months now, months and months this year, uh, songfreedom.com. And uh, also uh, Photoshop World. Are you going to Photoshop World, Levi? I will be there. And Rob, are you going to Photoshop World? I'm not sure yet. All right. I haven't well, decided. It would be great to meet you there in person. And uh, and I'll be there. Geez, this will be, I don't know how many Photoshop Worlds this will be for me, maybe 15 or so. Um, it's always a good time. It's going to be in a new time in August. Uh, yeah. August in Las Vegas. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I'm excited. <laughs> good time uh, to get in the air conditioning uh, in Las Vegas. So looking forward to that. Um, and... At the end of this, we've got a prize. We're still working on what that prize is, but we're giving away a really cool prize at the end of this uh, Hangout. So if you hang on to the very end, and if you ask some questions either in the Q&A or if you want to leave a comment on the Hangout event, uh, event page, we'll be keeping an eye on those. We'll be taking your questions all throughout this, so please ask away. Um, this is really kind of a fun thing, way to kick off the summer of, of Hangouts. Uh, and... Maybe we should get going. So, uh, Rob Knight, can you please you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're located, and how you got into this whole thing? We're glad you're here, man. This is going to be yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah, thanks for having me, man. I feel like I've seen Levi like seven times lately. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Well, I'm, uh, I'm part of the Lumix Luminary team. So we're basically photographers who uh, are tasked with showing off the Panasonic Lumix cameras, and part of that is the great video that they capture. And so the reason that, that I'm here is to talk about cinemagraphs, which is sort of a combination of a still picture and a moving picture. And uh, it's something that I didn't get into until I was using the Lumix cameras because they're so easy to switch between stills and video that there's a lot of times where, um, you know, I probably wouldn't take the time to switch a DSLR into video mode, but uh, it's just as easy as hitting the red button on the Lumix camera. So, uh, right. but I'm based in Atlanta and... Um, I've been a, an Adobe certified expert in Lightroom for years and years, so here we are. What's your uh, go-to Lumix camera these days? I use the GH4 more than anything. Uh, the GH4, Ooh. and then I have an infrared converted GX7 that Ooh. I like a lot, too. Oh, Rob, you just changed my world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was oh, yeah. thinking about selling it. No, my dude. GX7. It's, it's, and it's I'm going to convert it. Red. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, very cool. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to talk. <laughs> So while I was getting ready for this topic, because this is really a new one for me, I, I've seen these before, and I was thought, oh, that's kind of neat. But I never really kind of got into making them or dive into and haven't used them. So I did a little kind of research, and I found um, some things that I thought maybe I'll just do a little screen share and share this. So uh, if you're not, if you're totally not ever heard of these or, or seen them, I thought it might be a kind of cool, a good way to have it in your mind of what these things are. So. Let me do that. And so I found this article on time.com about uh, Jamie Beck and Kevin Berg who are credited with starting this whole cinemagraph thing. And this is a pretty cool thing. And, it, and they call it exactly what you said, a living photograph. Um, like it has a moment inside. And there are... Here, you know, the taxi just sliding through there. It's these cool little snip, these little snapshots of life, this little bit of motion. Um, and over the weekend, I started trying to look in a different way uh, of trying to see these things in my little backyard environment over Memorial Day weekend. Um, and they have a website called cinemagraphs.com that has all of these really cool uh, examples of these cinemagraphs in them. Um, these are ones for New York, but they're really kind of they're they're a little bit creepy, I think, right? Because it's <laughs> it's it's a, it's a still, but it's there's a little bit of motion. Um, but they're really kind of cool. Like this one here, this guy uh, flipping the paper with everyone else frozen around it. I mean, there's just something kind of eerie about that. So um, 
when I got into you know playing around with the actual creation of them, I, I was fascinated by trying to shoot video uh, with this in mind. Like, what's the little bit of motion? What's the little bit of interest that you can uh, capture while still you want to obviously create an, a compelling image too, right? I mean, that's part of it. Uh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. So. Uh, so well, and it's it's interesting because like the guy with the newspaper with everybody frozen around him, I think that's the perfect example of what a cinemagraph can be. Mm-hmm. Like a cinemagraph with only one thing moving is kind of like a video clip. You know what I mean? It's sort of like it, that is what it is. But if there's only one thing that you expect to move in the picture and it's moving, then mm-hmm. okay, great. But if there's you know in that case like a hundred people that should be moving but only one of them is, then I think that is that's what makes a cinemagraph. Interesting. Right. Yeah. So there's some element of frozen motion and some actual motion. Right. Right. Okay. Um, I'll post the links to those in the event page if anybody wants to just check those out, uh, you know, separately. I just thought it was kind of a good way to get because it's still different. I mean, yeah, you probably have seen them, but who, you know, and it seems like now that I you you now that I've been playing with it a little bit, it's kind of it seems a little bit obvious too. It's like, oh yeah, why don't why wouldn't you kind of take this video to the next level. If you're a photographer and you're already, you know, creating stills, and now you're shooting some video, why not try to com- combine the two? Um, and then Levi and I were talking before the hangout. Do you say GIF or do you say GIF? That the great uh, internet <laughs> debate. There was there was an article um, last year. the The guy who created the format said it's GIF like the peanut butter. GIF like yeah. the peanut butter. Okay, yeah. GIF. That's kind of what I was That's saying, good. but I. I never knew that I was was right. So GIF or GIF, sure. go with GIF. If the guy who made it up says GIF, then there you go. Yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons they've become popular lately too is because we can all share MP4 high-quality video and we don't have to have a little animated GIF, you know? Right, right. Um, and so in my experimenting with this, I was, I was sharing uh, some on Facebook and noticed right away that... So Facebook doesn't support the animation in a GIF. So if you do share one, you need to also really, you need to host it someplace else so that if someone is going to click through, they can actually see the actual animation off of Facebook. Um, so that, maybe we can look at that kind of a, after we actually go through the process of making these things. But sure. uh, where, where would you host one of these once you've, once you've done it so that you can share it with other people? What are, what are some ways to do that? Um, so maybe we should get into... The actual, how does this tie into Lightroom piece, um, which is, you've gone out, you've shot some stills, you've shot some motion, what do you do next? Um, what do you do, Rob? Okay. Well, I, I import video into Lightroom the same way that I do stills. Pretty much anything that I work on goes through Lightroom. Um, and I use a piece of software called Cinemagraph Pro from a company called Flixel. And, you know, they didn't invent the Cinemagraph, but they made it really easy and um, I was aware of their company a couple of years ago when they have an, an iPad app where you literally load in a piece of video and finger paint what you want to move and um, they just came out with the Mac version about a year later so um, I've got that tool as well that's uh, it's it's a great it's super easy and the, you can actually load 4k footage from the GH4 into it um, and that's kind of the weak link between Lightroom and Flixel is that Lightroom won't export the 4k video I can see the 4k and I can play it but I can't export it. But you still get the advantage of, you know, basically like down resing the video to to uh, 1080 from 4K. You still, you know, it gets a little sharper and a little clearer, and, and it looks nice. So, um, let's see. I will share. I'm not as adept at this as the other Rob, but <laughs> let me share this screen here. So this is in uh, this is in Lightroom, and this is a piece of 4K video. So I can play the video, and there's a couple things. A couple of things to remember. Let me. Uh, and I just point out too, uh, playing video in Lightroom is fairly resource intensive. So when you're doing it during a hangout, and you probably have other things open, uh, yeah, I don't think <laughs> yeah. it makes my laptop sing when I try to do all these. Got things. it. Well, and the other thing to notice too is that I'm rather than using my Thunderbolt monitor to play this, I'm playing it back on my actual laptop screen, because the uh, hardware acceleration doesn't necessarily get any faster with the Thunderbolt monitor and it actually plays video better on my laptop screen so that's why I have it over here. Oh, interesting. Um, but um, there's a few things to remember when you're gonna make a cinemagraph no matter how you're gonna do it. 
Um, again, more than one thing moving is important. And I wish I could mute this and not mute myself. Let me see if I can do that. Um, so obviously the waves are coming in in this piece, and I've also got the flag waving in the back here. So those are there's several things going on here that I can that I can have move or not move. Yeah, you can see the video is still trying to keep up with what I'm doing. Um, so you can use the Cinemagraph, uh, Cinemagraph Pro app to select your still frame, basically. And then you mask on that to, to show the motion underneath. So you can do that in Cinemagraph Pro, but in Lightroom, you can just as easily um, scrub to the frame that you want to keep. And then I've already got one selected here, so we don't have to wait for that. But you just click here and go to Capture Frame. Mm -hmm. Right, and then you end up with the JPEG uh, right from that image. So I selected a, a piece here. You can see the difference in the start of the video and the end, uh, and since with you the shot, light falling on. What's that? Since since you shot this in 4K, this is an 8 megapixel still. Is that right? Exactly. Exactly. Oh, excellent. Yeah, like, that's a printable picture right there. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but so I I selected a, a a frame here that has a wave crashing, and uh, and I can still have this wave moving. This is what I'm planning to do with this cinemagraph. So you can see it's a little bit bright. I basically exposed it to the right a little bit and this is why I'm not going to just open this 4K footage in uh, the cinemagraph app. So obviously if you take a piece of video and go into the develop module it says video is not supported but I have the JPEG frame out of that same piece of video and I can edit that just fine. Yeah. So I'm going to do that um, I can, not everything transfers. Uh, your vibrance and saturation transfer, your whites and blacks. Highlights and shadows won't go between stills and video, but your tone curve will, which is great. Yeah. Um, so you can edit that a little bit just to dial that in. And then, you know, shift or command click to select the video also in the film strip and then synchronize. And you can Hello. see here everything that will transfer over. Yeah, th and this is the cool part of doing it this way is this will show you exactly what settings uh, can be adjusted uh, on your video. Right. I and mean, you can you could do everything you were doing plus more on the JPEG. But oh, right. If your goal is to get it on the video, that will show you exactly what settings are possible. Yeah, exactly. So saturation and vibrance they work. Um, the tone curve is a big one for me. I use the tone curve instead of using clarity, which is grayed out and things like that. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. And, okay. and so you hit synchronize, and then. Uh, go back to the library module, and then my video now has the same adjustments on it. Pretty you can cool. see it's a lot darker because the sun's not falling on this part of the cliff yet, but it yeah. basically matches that. And I can take both of these pieces and export them and then open them into the uh, Cinemagraph Pro app. Cool. I have to say, while you're still in Lightroom, I like your identity plate. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I got that from uh, Gavin Go. like five years ago, I think. We're, we're looking at the top left corner of, of yeah. Rob's screen right now, looking at this uh, grayscale. Yeah, if you work on a laptop, this is really, really convenient to have. So you can tell if, you're, if your screen's at some funky angle and your contrast is off, it's, it's nice. Yeah, very Excellent. Cool. That's a good idea. Also, you could, to absolutely complicate things a lot more, <laughs> you could you do this video in Photoshop instead. So if, you, if you're on the photography plan, uh, the photography bundle from from the Creative Cloud, you could open this video in Photoshop and then activate Camera Raw as a filter and yes. have all of your Lightroom adjustments are the same adjustments in Adobe Camera Raw. And then you could you could tweak your video the same way that you tweak your your uh, photos in Lightroom. Sure. And that I, it's a whole other thing to do, but well, it's and, not and terribly complicated either. Right, and realistically, if you did that in Photoshop, you could have your, you know, your JPEG image, your still, and put it on top of your video, and use a layer mask and mask out the part that you wanted to move, right and, and yeah. there you'd be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's how I did mine in my playing around with. Sure. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Well, go on, Rob. What do we do now? Okay. Well, from here, you just basically select both of, you know, your video and your still frame that you wanted to have, and export them. And I already did that. Put them in a folder. Um, you know what, I will show the uh, the video options here. Yeah, thank you, because for some reason, for probably a year and a half, I was trying to export videos, and it wasn't working right, because mm -hmm. I didn't click the box that says include video files. This is pretty important. There's a little <laughs> box here that says video. <laughs> include video files, and then you can pick the format. Um, 
obviously original unedited file. Well, that that you lose your changes, so you don't want to do that. Um, it's nice that they added that unedited part because you should just say original and nobody uh -huh. realized right, that. Right, right. Because you thought you were just keeping the same format you were making. Right. Exactly. So unfortunately, you can't keep the same format. Right. And so the quality, even with the maximum quality, you can see it's 1080, you know, 30p file versus the 3840 by 2160 original 4K. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, so it's gonna, you know, it's gonna downsample it a little bit, but the JPEG won't. I don't resize the JPEG, so it stays as as high res as we can get it. And then, uh, and the next where I'll usually put them in a folder just on the desktop, you know, Flixel folder kind of a thing. Yeah. So, do any more? You want to talk about Lightroom more, or you, you want to see the app in in motion here? Yeah, well, yeah. No, just go through. Yeah. Let's go through and see your whole thing there, and then we can. Uh, I'll say anyone, you know, listening, watching. Uh, add your questions in. We've got one from Mark already. We'll come back to those. And it's from your questions in the Q&A or comments left on the event page that we pull from the, for the winner at the at the end. So Right. So right now, Mark Lassad is the only... Uh, he's got a good... He's, he's 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 congratulations, good Mark. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so I go to Cinemagraph Pro, and then uh, I go New, and... I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I'll just open one. How about that? Because it's you'd basically just open it from from the video, and this is what you get. So it's going to show you the video clip first of all, right? You're going to open the video first, and at the bottom here in what's basically the the uh, timeline is uh, a specific amount of video. I think it's nine seconds. Eight or nine seconds? I think it's eight. Yeah. Is it eight? Okay. Because <laughs> I've I've got a twelve second clip that just doesn't work. Right. Right. So as I drag the the ends of this this eight second block here, the the piece itself I think is twenty four seconds. So um, I can select using this little purple dial what my still frame is going to look like. So you can see over here on the right side, you can see that sort of you can I can find that one splashing you know, rock picture there, splashing wave over the rock. And that's going to be my still frame. Okay, okay. pretty easy. It's showing you everything that's moving. And then you go to uh, mask and basically paint what you want to move. Right, there's my still frame. And then uh, it does have the, uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, now it's caught up. Yeah, this is kind of burning out over the... Uh, of the Hangout too, but so I've painted in a mask here, and um, there's the overlay of it. So the purple is masked out, oh, right? Okay. The purple is where the original photo is going to be, and then where it's painted out. Well, you can see that the original video is showing through. So I've got the flag waving, and I've got this one wave crashing, and then I've basically sort of dialed it in here and softened that edge, so it looks like that one wave is coming out. But I still have the frozen wave here. So, like I mentioned before, I want to have something that should be moving that's not, mm. so that there's a stark contrast between the motion and the pieces that are still. So, if I want to dial that in even more, I can go down here, and and then import that still image that I was that we uh, edited inside of Lightroom. So I can import the video and then import the the different still image, um, and it doesn't even have to be from the same clip. It can be. Uh, if the camera's locked down on a tripod and you have one shot where maybe the sun's, you know, the light's better or something like that, you can use that still image and then paint it out and have your video play underneath. Cool. Hey, uh, Rob, your your mouse isn't really showing up for us. Things are working. Oh, okay. But if you could just say, like, down here on the bottom left. Right. right? Down here on the bottom left, there's a yeah. little box that shows you. This is basically a still image of the still frame that you're masking. So when you click on that, and you can import, and you can even export this still image, and then open it up in Photoshop or Lightroom, right. and edit that to dial that in too. Uh, if you do too much editing, then of course it's not really going to match the video underneath. So you got to sort of sort of balance that. So that's why it was good to start in Lightroom, and, right. and balance your your well. Although then, like you said, you're you're stuck down to uh, full HD instead of 4K. Right, that's the rub because if you open the 4K here, you're, there's not there are some editing tools, but they're basically effects. You know, there's there's some um, it's like Instagram, sort of Instagram kind of things, and there's some adjustments, but nothing like you're going to do in uh, in Lightroom. You know, just basic exposure and brightness and that kind of thing. So hmm. it's definitely a lot more robust in Lightroom or Photoshop 
if you're going to be making adjustments to what, does, the, what the video does looks like. Photo, does Photoshop save us a 4K video? Haven't you know, I that. don't even know. I would imagine. I say yes. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. says yes. I can't contradict. I don't have anything that shoots 4K video. <laughs> I would bet so. So, and then from here, to answer your question, Rob, about where you host your, your um, cinemagraphs, part of your Flixel, if you buy Flixel, on, whether it's via the app or the Cinemagraph Pro um, application on the Mac, you can upload to your, your Flixel account, and then you can get an embed code from there. So it will actually just repeat, um, you know, play on a loop, or you can have it bounce so that it plays to the end and then plays back. Uh, so a lot of the fashion stuff you see is is usually it'll bounce like the girl's hair will blow and then it'll blow back the other way kind of thing. Uh, uh, okay. Now, do we have to? Could could we create this in Photoshop and then host it on Flixel? Uh, I would imagine not. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of a it's kind of a closed circuit as far right. as I, I see. Cool. Very cool. Well, let's and take Mark's let's take Mark's question. Yeah. While we're looking at this, okay. so Mark Mark is asking, how do you get your inspiration for new cinemagraphs? You know, I'm going to stop sharing here. Um, the inspiration is is uh, based on the motion. It's kind of the same thing. If I'm inspired to shoot video at all, it's uh, like a visual inertia, right? Like things in at rest can stay at rest, and it makes a beautiful picture. But sometimes things in motion make better, you know, motion images. Visual so, inertia, that's good. I like that. With, um, with the Cinemagraph, it's a really specific thing. Like, it's not hard to do, and the tools are, are pretty easy, but um, if you have motion that crosses in front of other motion, then you can't really mask one out and not the other. You know what I mean? Like that, that shot of the guy reading the paper, if one of those people crossed in front of him, then it would break. It wouldn't work. Right. You know? Um, so... It, it can be kind of frustrating. When I first started trying to do these, I would say, oh, this is great, and try to do some handheld. Can't do them handheld either. Mm, because right. if mm. you're moving, then mm. the mask, the little window, moves around. You know what mm. I mean? Like the video moves around underneath it. So mm -hmm. um, you have to be locked down on the tripod, and you have to kind of get a feel for how the movement interacts with other movement. You know? Yeah. Well, and that matches with the next question from Jim Campbell. He says, waves are a good example because they're cyclical, but how do you stop the sudden jerk as a non-cyclical video clip reaches the end and starts again? Mm -hmm. So you've, well, got to just, you've got to be picky in practice. Yeah, well, I think that's, that's it, right? You need to find something that almost loops in real life, right? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share the screen again and show you. When you, um, when you go into the Cinemagraph app, um, hello, mouse, where is it? Here we go. Um, when you go to this loop screen... You've got uh, down here in the in the timeline at the bottom. You see it says drag to set the crossfade amount. So you can adjust how much it crossfades, which is blending with the which with is the which is as it stops, it's already blending with the beginning again, mm -hmm. right? And you can just drag that like you would in Premiere Pro or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so even though I mean this isn't this is cyclical, but you know at the end of this wave crashing, it just fades out and starts over. It doesn't go back really, yeah. right. and that's just because of this crossfade adjustment. Yeah. So when you're when you're looking in visual, trying to pre-visualize something that might uh, be a good candidate. So, like your flag up on the hill, which I have to say, this looks like you're in my neck of the woods here. Is this Maine? That it is Maine. Yeah, it's uh, Pimlico Point. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, finding something that where so you're locked down a tripod. You you want to have something that almost is a loop where wherever the motion is uh, completes a full cycle, so it comes back to where it starts again somehow, flipping right. the paper, some, or or maybe goes off the screen completely, like that cab that was re in the reflection of the window. That was a cool. The one, cab yeah. comes in, goes out. Cab right. comes in, goes out. Um, right. And so essentially, so the start and end would look the same. Um, right. Right. And and then so the, and then, and then the other part would be so there's nothing crossing over that zone that would mess it up. A person right. walking by, a blade of grass waving through, or I don't know, anything that could interfere with your loop. Uh, right. There. And something like, for speaking of that cab picture, something that makes that a more interesting cinemagraph to me would be if you could see the cab. You know, right. I've, I've shot some things like that where you can see 
what's reflected and the reflection, but only one of those things moves. Right. So you expect the person that's being reflected to move, but they're frozen, but then their reflection continues to, to move in the image. That's cool. Uh, um, I, I think there's, there's so many things I'm thinking of, like I'm imagining all kinds of stuff I can do with kids. And, yeah. you know, a ball bouncing across, a still portrait. Um, sure. And all kinds of, like you said, a surprise is much more interesting yeah. than, than standard. Like, it, can I share my screen real quick? I've got one here that, uh, that I did in a workshop with Julio Shorio. And oh, let's do entire screen. We'll say while, while you're doing that, we're about halfway through, and we've now got three people in the running for the prize, so please keep those questions coming. In, uh, or co Actually, there was a comment on the event page, too, so we'll include, uh, include that commenter as well. Uh, Excellent. And, Tell me that commenter's name, because I get the name from the Q&A list. I will, I will do that. And, um, and thanking our sponsors again, too, so thanks to Adobe and Song Freedom and Photoshop World. And if you come to Photoshop World, maybe we can actually uh, find some, go out on a little photo walk and find some... You know, like maybe. Um, oh, we've got some exciting stuff coming up for Photoshop World. Or I don't know. It's got to be some. Vegas yeah, like is we, great for that. Good we opportunities can't talk in about Vegas. It yet, lights moving. Yeah. Neon yeah, lights. Definitely. We've got the perfect setup already underway that we'll be announcing soon on Photo Focus, and it'll be perfect for the the uh, Cinemagraph action uh, to to be announced. So, so go ahead, Levi. Sorry. Go no, away. no, that, that'll be a fun one. Um, well, so this is one I made in a workshop, and it's it's kind of kind of a commercially looking one, you know, like like you might expect to see this uh, on a uh, of a product picture with the with the scarf blowing, and and it you know it bounces back and forth here, and that's okay, but it's not really a surprise like you're talking about, Rob, that would really refine something. Sure, like this, you could just as easily do that with a clip of video that repeats. Right. 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 I mean she's she's holding her face is absolutely not moving, but sure. but it's not it's not like you said, it doesn't it doesn't draw you in like a surprise um, would do. I just shared the name of the commenter with you. Um, here's, here's one from uh, from Vegas from a couple of years ago. Let's see. And these are hosted on um, Flixel.com on sort of my page here. So um, you can see the tree is blowing in the wind, and obviously you would expect the traffic to move and the signs to be yeah. moving and things like that. That's Yeah, that's exactly yeah, what you're talking about. Yeah. And so also, like, so what, with your tree in the motion there, you want to have, you kind of want to have a clean background around it, right, so that there's not, um, I guess, so like if, the, if there were clouds moving behind there, that would right. It would be tough. And I had to I had to really specifically mask out the the flag here in the corner. I don't know if you can see my mouse pointer, but there's an American flag right on the Bellagio side. Oh yes, I see. Oh that. yeah. So I had to really carefully mask that so it didn't blow over that. Mm -hmm. But if it does, you know, if the tree branch crosses that, then the flag moves part of the time, mm -hmm. and it kind of breaks, you know. Yeah. But then this piece in particular, I was talking about um, using a different clip, uh, a still image from a different clip. Oh, yeah. um, that, that's the creepy element right there I'm talking about. <laughs> right, right. So these guys weren't standing there when the eye was moving. I just had my camera set up on a little travel tripod, and I took a picture of them, and then I masked it out with the eye moving. So. Oh, cool. So that, that's a question somebody else asked. They said, so during a video, can you click your exposure button and take a full-res image to work with, or does it need to be from the video? And so, no, you can add a picture. You can add a picture, right? I mean, yeah. the benefit of... of Taking a still from the video is that it's the same uh, format and you know the same aspect ratio basically, and yeah. you're not having to downsample it and, and crop it. You know. Yeah. I've got a few from Vegas. Does does your Flixel page like have a URL? Could you post that on the event page so people could uh, click through that? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> you have to do it right now, but just you know. Flixel.com/slash Rob oh, underscore. Right? That's it. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. Um. I have, I have weird ones like when I was figuring out how to do this. Yeah. Um, I'm sitting at breakfast in Las Vegas and I saw the heat shimmer coming off of the of the uh, heat lamps. Oh wow! So the heat the heat shimmer is the only thing oh, moving. Oh, that's the only thing moving. Uh, cool. And I waited till the lady the uh, waitress was pouring the orange juice, so it's frozen, but the, the nice. little heat shimmer is. Uh, <laughs> it was funny. 
since I started doing this, I keep noticing things like it's wicked hot and dry here in New England, which is unusual for this time of year. So watering my lawn and then moving the sprinkler this morning, and there was a rainbow in the sprinkler. I was like, oh, that would be a good cinemagraph. And so I'm trying to do 10 million things <laughs> at the same time, dragging my tripod out to, to video the sprinkler to try and catch a rainbow. So sure. um, it is kind of a fun, but it's fun, right? It's a fun it's a fun way to, anytime you start thinking differently in your photography, right. in your motion capture, I think that's a great thing. So Absolutely. And when just like anything else, about, like, like if you get a new lens, you go, you put that lens on the camera and go out and shoot just that for a week, and then you figure out what it what it's good at and what it's bad at. And it's the same thing with cinemagraphs. It's not great for everything, but you know if you go out and just think about that for a few days, then you'll train yourself to sort of notice when when's a good time to make a cinemagraph. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm feeling like I'm feeling like it's a completely new. Um, I, I feel like a like when I was a, a photographer, a, a new photographer. I mean. Because I'm I'm having to see things differently, like Rob's talking about, and it's it's really refreshing. Uh, so Tim, who's been on a question rampage, which is awesome, good question. Yes. Tim. Um, he's asking about good uh, time length for the motion, uh, shorter, better, longer. Does it matter how it moves? Uh, what do you think about that, Rob? Well, I mean, it depends on what it is. Um, I usually, my video clips that I use to blend with my still photos and slideshows and stuff are usually 10 to 15 seconds. So I kind of do that. I don't, I don't shoot video differently necessarily for a cinemagraph. Hmm. Um, but like the shot with the waves, I basically rolled the video for, like I said, I think it was 24 or 30 seconds because I wanted a specific wave to crash and I'm, I'm watching and I, okay, I like the way that one came in and now I'll wait till a big one crashes on the rock and I'll use that for the still frame and, you know, I shot it specifically to make a cinemagraph out of it, so right. um, that makes a big difference, I think. Probably something else to keep in mind is, you know, this is going to be in a GIF format. If you're going to be putting it online somewhere, you probably don't want it to be, you know, really heavy for download purposes, Sure. you know, for the viewer, especially if they're on mobile or whatever, so you want to try and keep it probably short enough, you know, as short as possible so that you get the motion you want, but also it's a manageable size. Is there a target, like, pixel dimension size for the outputted GIF that you try to shoot for in general, or is it, I'm sure it probably varies in your purpose, but... It really varies, and I usually just upload them to the Flixel site, and I, I honestly don't know if they keep them at, uh, at full HD resolution or not. They're hosted from there. Um, One of the cool things about hosting it on the Flixel, too, is that the um, they they have an embed embed code so you could embed it any place in a website it doesn't have to just be you know on on Twitter or Facebook you could embed it as a picture in um, in a website so I'm imagining I'm imagining like like this cool street scene as a header on a website right. yeah yeah and then while you're sitting there reading down here suddenly a car drives by up there or something and you know, like a really surprise motion. Well, sure. what I was when I was doing the research on this, I was seeing you know people trying to figure out how to use these in advertisements. So since I mean, animated gifs have been used in advertisements as banners for since the beginning of the internet. That's not new, but um, but using this type of thing uh, where there's a still with motion, so someone doesn't need to be u using any type of video player. Hopefully, the file size is smaller. Um, maybe it's unexpected, you know, that element of it where you, th you think you're looking at a still and all of a sudden it, the eyes move or something like that. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's an interesting thing. We'll see, you know, how how much it takes uh, legs beyond that. Sure. Um, yeah, Terry I, says, I think that's... To figure out how to frame them. <laughs> and, well, <laughs> well I was thinking, what about, like, Apple Watch? Something Apple like Watch? that. Could you, could you, you just get the, that'd be kind of small. <laughs> <laughs> just get the LCD picture frame. Yeah, yeah right. I've right. got one of those. I have to see. I'll have to see if it supports the GIF format. Um, yeah. and then the well, animated sure play video. Format. Just have it. You can export from from the Cinemagraph Pro app anyway. You can, and, and I imagine you can out of uh, Photoshop. But you can determine how many times it repeats. True. Yeah, so in you Photoshop you can just copy and paste again. Yeah, you could just have an MPEG four, you know, a video file that plays on your on your wall. You could totally do that. Yeah. Cool. Um. So we're getting some more questions coming in. That's cool. How about um, I don't know, Levi? If I can, I don't mind sharing a little another. Get back to Lightroom and look at another one of these approach. Or if Rob, you have another one, I, you know, don't mind sharing that. Keep us moving along. Cool. Yeah. Um, 
they make a great daily profit pages for the Harry Potter fan. Yeah, that's totally it, right? It's totally Harry Potter uh, motion in the still. His were probably a little more video aspect than, than these, but uh, but yeah, no, that's a cool. If you were doing like a Harry Potter themed thing, this could be a, definitely a cool way to in, add some motion to to the still. Yeah, one well, of the fun ones is a as a like a still portrait, and then she moves into a smile, and you know, she's yeah, let so me, still long enough that that you expect it to be a portrait. Yeah. Let me share one. This is just me messing around. This is not like the best one ever, but this is my evolution as a cinemagraphographer. Was there a word for that yet? <laughs> um, so cinemagrapher. This was uh, cinemographer. a cinema a cinemographer. All right, am I, I like sharing? It. So this was just me sitting in my yard over Memorial Day weekend. We had a little chimney fire, um, and what was cool, and you know, in doing this experiment was coming up with those issues that we were just talking about. Like, so having I was trying to find a, a part of this fire, this flame, that was isolated enough from the rest mm -hmm. that I could try and mask it out and not have it look too weird. So there's one part where it kind of goes away that doesn't look so great. But um, for the most part, it kind of you know looks like a, I was trying to get the flickering ember effect, and maybe I could refine the mask to get that part out a little bit better. But um, But I did this all in in Lightroom and then to Photoshop and because I didn't I didn't have any other tools for doing it and so let me just show you kind of just the approach I had inside of cool. Photoshop so I mean inside of Lightroom so here in Lightroom this is the the video clip that I started with and it was just a, a short clip so the whole thing was probably you know less than five seconds or something like that and um, I did shoot this I think it um, 60p. I don't think I was really thinking about that or worried about that particularly, but um, I don't know if that makes a difference. I mean, because I was trying to, I was figuring I would go for some small GIF at the end, so I wasn't, I wasn't really worried about uh, my capture when I was playing around. But that's probably something, you know, you probably want to decide uh, when you're figuring out your output what, you know, obviously capturing the best quality you can originally is always going to be your goal. But so inside of Lightroom here. I just trimmed it down, all right? I tried to find a section within this longer clip that just had that repeating element. Um, and then I just brought in my edges to trim that down uh, to a reasonable size, knowing that I could trim it later because it was going to go to Photoshop uh, to do the final parts there. And then I did exactly what Rob sh uh, showed before, which was to save out a still, all right? Um, a capture frame. Let me bring up my my film strip. And so here is the the still that I grabbed out of that. Um, now the purpose I I grabbed this still not was not for me to mask later on inside of Photoshop, but this was the this was the one that I actually did the developing in in the develop module. Um, so uh, going along with that same that same workflow that Rob had, the only thing different that I did um, was I if you have the JPEG selected first you can actually select the video inside the develop module and then turn on auto sync and you can you can actually develop the video as you're developing the JPEG but the only thing the only reason why you would do it that way is if you already knew what settings transfer over right because this way like I could go in here and do something that's not supported by video like say bring up clarity and I would see that happen to my JPEG but that's not going to transfer to the video. So right. if you're just getting started, it really makes more sense to do what Rob did and use the sync function so that you get a real clear visual of what is going to transfer. Um, but one of the things that I did in here was uh, HSL will transfer over. So I just wanted to darken down the greens in the back um, and, and then skew the colors a little bit just to give it a, a little bit of an effect um, mm -hmm. from what it started out, here's the before and then, you know, the after. So um, so that was kind of fun, just seeing what you can do with, to video. Lightroom's not a video editor. I mean, it, you can edit video in Lightroom, but that doesn't make it a video editor. So anyone who's doing video professionally is not going to think Lightroom is the, <laughs> is the go-to tool for editing their video. But for this kind of stuff, hey, it, it was kind of fun. Um, so then once I got my... Um, edits done to the video, that's when I exported out the video itself. Um, and so when I was exporting out the video, 
one of the things that I did differently was I just had it. I just handed it off to Photoshop um, directly. And so, what you can't do inside of Lightroom uh, with video, like, like you can with stills, you can't use the edit in Photoshop command or right. the command E or Control right. E and send it over. Um, that's a question I get all the time on the help desk. But if you're exporting video, just like if you're exporting a still in this post-processing step, you can hand it off to another program. You probably could hand it off to Cinemagraph Pro. Yeah, I'm just looking at that right now, actually. Um, Let's see. And all it does is it saves off the copy to the same place you start, you, you chose up here. Uh, so the copy gets created in that location uh, with whatever naming convention you apply. Make sure a video is checked, Levi. <laughs> yes. Um, if you're not exporting a still, then this part is going to be grayed out, so it doesn't matter. Uh, image sizing is not going to matter for video. Sharpening is not going to matter. Metadata, I don't think, matters for video because it's not really... Uh, metadata is not greatly supported with video. Um, obviously, watermark. So really, all you're worried about is your post-processing, videos checked, and where it's going to go. Um, yeah, that would be, that'd be a great time to... Uh... To save a preset, an export yeah. preset for that. Yeah, which I did not do. <laughs> that would be a good thing for me to do. Um, and I was here's my last thing that I was doing was something for Stocksy, and uh, that doesn't really apply here. But I'll, the name it, in this example is not going to really matter, so I'll, I'll just let that ride. And so when I hit export, now it's saving off that video. Um, and I think I probably already, since I've already done this, I'm probably going to run into um, it telling me that there's already a video file in there. So it just handed it right off to Photoshop. Boom. And then there I am inside of Photoshop with my timeline, which doesn't need to, need to be this tall. Um, and now I've got, let's see, about 40 frames here. I don't need it to be even that long. Um, so I can still... Are you guys still there? I didn't lose yes. You. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> all, right, all of a sudden I thought, am I still talking just to myself? <laughs> um, so... So here's how I learned this, and what I'll do is I'll put this, I'll put a link to this tutorial in the uh, in the event page because I'm brand new to this, and so I of course who do I go to is Russell Brown, uh, Dr. Brown is my go-to guy for learning how to do anything in Photoshop, um, and he's got a great tutorial. It's a little bit old, and that I think it was probably for CS5, um, and most of it is still going to transfer over to uh, Photoshop uh, CC. But some of the language changed on some of the menus. So, but it, it was intuitive enough that I think you you know it's easy to figure out. But um, so all I did uh, at this stage was to uh, kind of hone in on the frames that I wanted to include. Um, so I didn't need to include this entire segment. But I just am looking again. So kind of going back to that idea of like, so what is the motion that you want to keep in this? And where, what do you want that should be motion that's frozen? And that's kind of what I was going for. This is maybe not the best example. but um, So trying to find where I've got a little bit of loop on that flicker of flame, where it kind of goes to something but doesn't go over the, the rest. And I kind of think it's just in this beginning part where it's just flickering enough in that one area without going too, too big into the other part of the flame. And uh, so somewhere in there. So... I'm just going to kind of count out like two, three, four, five. This is in that tutorial. You'll see Dr. Brown doing that. You know, about a dozen frames or so uh, that has that in there. And then I just trimmed it down uh, from there. Um, the rest, I will try to, I'm going to try and go through, but I'm going to tell you, this is not like a workflow that I've totally nailed down. This is like the most right. off the cuff edit, uh, demoing <laughs> I've ever, ever done. Um, so, I'm just going to split it right about there and just delete this. All right. So there's my there's my little clip that I'm starting with. All right. And then the next thing that uh, I'll do is I'm going to create another uh, video group for my still. All right. And so what I want to find in here in this little clip is what's the background or what's the still frame that I want to have visible when I'm masking out the rest. So trying to get something where there's a little bit bigger flame in the background, maybe uh, to have it just be a little more interesting. So we'll say right there. And then I'm going to go up and go to Command A, Select All. And then under my Edit menu, Copy Merged, because I want to just get a copy of this particular thing. And then I'm just going to paste it um, in my second video group here. And paste. 
All right, and so now I've got a still on top, so we're not going to see any motion there. I'm just going to come to my end of my clip. I'm going to get rid of that part of the still. And so here I've got a still, all right, not anything moving right now, which is where we do the next part, which is the masking. So I'm just going to add a layer mask to that. I'm going to grab a brush. Now, I don't have my Wacom tablet on here because I've got all these other things plugged in. So I'm just going to be doing this with my trackpad, which is not the best way to paint on a mask. I'm going to switch over to black. So um, when you're painting on a layer mask, I'll just make sure I, I added a white mask here. So I want to paint with black. If you press the D key, that sets the default black and white in case you were messing around with some other colors. Then you can press X to swap between those. And so I want to be painting with black. And I'm just going to be painting over this, this part of the flame that I want to include in my flicker. I'm doing it pretty rough here, so you'll have to forgive me. But if I move my timeline now, we can see there's the motion. You punched That's a hole through the video. All I did, I punched a hole through the still yeah. so we can see the, the video still, playing right. underneath. Right. Exactly. All Very right. Cool. Uh, here, so once you've got that part done, now this is the part where uh, I'm going to refer back to that video. So this is where I'm trying to remember what he said to do next. And now I think what we had to do was to make frames from clips, convert frame, flatten frames to clips. Let's see if that does it. Hey, I think that did it. Oh, it did. Whew. That's what you do. So <laughs> oh, I love when you wing it and it works. Um, <laughs> So you're going to get to this stage, and let me uh, make some more room on my layers palette. So when you do that, it includes the original frames that from the video and your still, but we don't actually need those anymore, so I'm going to delete those. Oh, really? Yeah, because mm -hmm. all I want are these individual frames. Right? And I'm going to hold down the Shift key, and I want to select all of these frames. Now you can see why using Flixel was a lot easier. <laughs> you don't have to go through all these steps. Right. Um, yeah, it's pretty much the same until this point, and then and then from here on, Flixel makes it like one right. click easy. Yeah. Yeah, and so now I am making. I think I'm making frames from clips. No, I'm not. Undo that. It's the other option. Convert frames. Convert frame animation. All right. Okay. Think we're good. Think we're still going good. And now there's one last thing we want to do, which was make frames from layers. And now I'm here. All right, so, whew. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah, so right. when I put the link to the video, you can watch it over and over again and see how Dr. Brown does it. I'm so giving him full credit for this. But notice the first frame here is set to the length of the video clip. So if you do follow this route, and this would be for anyone um, who doesn't have the Cinemagraph, which I think is Mac only, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, so for all yeah. our Windows friends, and set this to no delay, because you want to have these all set to zero seconds. So I'm going to hit this to forever as well. So now I have a looping video inside of here. Oops. Let's hit play, and there it is. Okay, so there's there's the effect we're looking for. Um, and so now I'm going to uh, stop that. And now we go to save for web, and this is where we make the GIF. All right, and let's see here. I actually, I actually did save a setting in here. So we're saving this out for the web, all right? And I did also resize mine down to 800 pixels on the long side. Oops, not 8,000, 800. Just to make it work on the web and make it little, you know, resize it down, sharpen it up, and all that kind of stuff. So when you're looking at your settings in here, you definitely want to choose 256 colors because GIF is already handicapped with the number of colors it can display. So you want to have that on the maximum. You want to have the GIF format. When it comes to your algorithm for your color, play around with these. You're going to see, um, if you go to the two up, you can kind of compare the before and after, too. Um, and some of these, I, I had some, you know, really, uh, you know, blurred out backgrounds. Um, and you're going to, you can see some uh, banding in there, depending on uh, how this works. So you definitely want to try these out and see which one, looks best for your example. may not be one setting that fits every every situation. So, um, And then the same thing for this dither algorithm. Try these other ones out as well. I found that on one where I had a really nice blur, really made a nice banding effect, but putting in noise seemed to, setting this to noise seemed to handle that pretty well. Oh, really? uh, so try try those out. If you, if you go this route, try these out. 
Um, and then once you're all done, um, you can preview it. So I'm going to hit preview, and hopefully it doesn't throw me out of the Hangout, because this is going to open it up in my web browser. I and think... Jim throws in that you could also add some crossfading uh, mm, yeah. in there. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'm trying to preview it. I don't. I think this is the same one I had before. So, um, if you hit that preview button, it should open it up in your web browser, so you can actually see the animation. And so that's kind of cool. So you don't have to go through the whole uh, step of uploading and all that. You can just click this preview button, and it should open up in your nice. web browser, and you'll see it. And then what I did was just I FTP'd this GIF up to my website, lightrumors.com, put it in a folder, and then that's the link I shared out on Facebook. So that's kind of the workflow for just doing it, the you know, the manually, <laughs> doing it manually, hosting it yourself, and then, sure, could I put this on my blog, could I put it on my website, could I use this in some other ways, um, if this was uh, for, you know, for some other paid project, there's a bunch of ways you can, you can leverage that out there, but, so that was kind of a quick run through, I'll paste that link to give uh, people a little bit more support uh, for, for that, and give Dr. Brown some credit in there too, so. Excellent. So yeah, that's that's how I that's how I hammered through it, and <laughs> I gotta say it was really it was really fun uh, getting to do that. Um, so happy to do, I'm happy to have some new new toy, new new way to experiment and play. And do we and, know if Smug Mug supports a GIF? I don't know. I don't know. I would I would think so, but I don't know for sure. They support yeah. video anyway. So. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. What I'm finding is that a lot of things will support. Just the still GIF. It's the animation part too. That um, right. So I, I think like G uh, G plus. I think that supports the animated part. But yeah. Um, but yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So any other questions out there, folks? Um, yeah. And there's obviously more you can do there. That was a quick run through of what right. you could do in Photoshop. Once you're in Photoshop, yeah, you can go crazy doing stuff. And um, and I think you know gives you. A, Whatever your video source is, too, it doesn't have to be um, like you probably could get something off your phone if you could keep your phone still enough. Uh, sure. Yeah, that's the rub for sure. In fact, yeah, from, set, set from on the, the railing, app, just on the table. Sure. From the Flixel app, you can just record video inside of the app and then oh, and then edit it. Very cool. That's pretty. Do cool. you know how much that app costs, Rob? I don't. Um, it was really expensive when it came out, and then it was less expensive. <laughs> yeah, I bought it up. Things go. I, I bought it after I, I think somebody put the wrong number in after WPPI last year. Yeah. And it was fifteen bucks. Okay. <laughs> and I think I think it leveled out to like ninety nine bucks right now or something. Something like that. Yeah. I I, and I remember when it was when it came out and I thought, well, you don't need that. Surely there's a way you can do it in Photoshop. And I looked up and the shortest tutorial I found for doing it in Photoshop was twenty minutes long. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Rob's oh. is now the shortest. I think so too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really yeah, think so too. Real, real quick run through. Um, yeah, and maybe in, in doing that, maybe there's some ways to make some of that into an action, or there's some you know steps you probably can, so. I'm sure. Can, yeah. Yeah, make some uh, efficiencies in your time there if, if you're doing it a lot. Um, but I don't know. I think it's I think it's a cool kind of different thing for us to explore. So. Yeah. Um, and like you said, for commercial applications, it's great. As many as many stores that are using you know big monitors for point of purchase stuff. I mean, that's yeah. Um, when it was right after we had a meeting with the Flixel people, it must have been um, Photo Plus two years ago. And I went to Las Vegas with my wife for a couple of days, and we were checking in at the Hard Rock. And behind the the uh, check in desk, they had these screens up, and it was right. a picture of a beer bottle. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if one drop of of uh, sweat on that beer bottle just started rolling down the bottle? Mm. And then mm -hmm. the next one was, you know, everybody play at the pool on on a to advertise their party on Sundays. Well, if just right. one girl was jumping up and down, you know, like yeah. what a great opportunity for for something like a cinemagraph. You know? Yeah, yeah, very cool. That that sounds like fun. Well, I'll say this is our kind of your last chance to get your last minute question in before we wrap and get yourself entered in for the prize, the magical prize that we're gonna still get. Um, <laughs> we're uh, not gonna say it until we know we got, we have it for sure, but it could be really cool. Um, <laughs> Could be really like make room in your driveway cool. No, I don't know about. Right. I don't know about that. It won't be that cool. Tesla's not sponsoring today. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're we're gonna try and hook you up. Uh, we always try to do that. But we will thank our sponsors one more time. Well, Levi, do you have the list of names so you can be starting that? I do. I'm gonna start it. All right. Uh, so thanks again to Adobe. 
uh, for sponsoring. Thank you very much, Song Freedom. You've been an awesome sponsor as well. And for Photoshop World, come to Photoshop World. See us in person. The folks from Adobe will be there. I don't know. Song Freedom are going to be there? They should come. That would be a good venue for them to come to. Um, hopefully, Rob, you'll be yeah. there. It would be great to shake your hand and meet you in person. Yeah, that would be great. Hopefully so. Levi? Um, I'll be there. All right. uh, we've only got two more shows before Photoshop World. Holy cow. Right. Yeah. Actually, I might be down at Atlanta Way in October uh, doing a workshop down there. So Cool. Let me know. Your oh, yeah. Your neighborhood. Um, so, Levi, you got any winner? I have almost winner got winner the winner. winner? And uh, while you do that, Terry did write in to say he thinks Smug Mug supports animated GIFs only at full resolution. Right. And our winner is Tim Learmont. Tim, question Based machine. Away. Yeah, is Tim still here? Tim. Yeah, yeah, you got to be here to win it. So if Tim doesn't answer That's in, right. we will pass it on to someone else. Excellent. And and did we did we say what we're giving away? No, because I well, wasn't sure we knew what it was. Let's do the Flixel. Yeah, if if okay. Flixel, they they've offered a uh, Cinemagraph Pro. Cinemagraph Pro. Hopefully, Tim's on a Mac. Yeah, That's right. <laughs> or an iPhone or an iPad. Or yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you're here, Tim, chime in in the Q&A or chime in on the event page. Somehow do your game show rundown so that we know that you're listening and you're here so we can give this prize to you. 12 so more seconds, Tim. We can connect with you some way to deliver this uh, to you. And if Tim's not there, you should be pulling out. Get another name ready. All right. That always oh. makes them chime oh, in. Tim's here. here. Tim wins. Woo-hoo. Okay. <laughs> 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 Anna, then you get the job, Tim. That's uh, right. Then they start chiming in. So, uh, so thank you very much to Rob. Rob, where can we find you when you're not hanging out here with us? Well, uh, robnightphotography.com, and then my workshops are all listed at digitalphotoadventures.com. All right. Where are you going next? Uh, where are we going next? Going to Denver, uh, nice. doing doing uh, ghost towns and trains and frontier Colorado stuff. Oh, very terrific. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. We'll very have fun good. doing that. Hopefully I'll get to catch up with you at some point in the future. It's my old grounds. Yeah. yeah Levi, where... Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Levi, where can we find you? Oh, I'm uh, I'm at Photo Levi on, on Twitter and Instagram, and always on Photo Focus, and I will be at the Out of Chicago conference coming up at the end of June. And in I, Chicago. In Chicago. <laughs> it's yes. not out of Chicago. It's called it's out of Chicago. Chicago, but it's in Chicago. <laughs> right, and it is, it is one of the funnest conferences I have ever heard of, and I'll be teaching there along with uh, a ton of other people, like Valerie Chardon and, and uh, all these other French people who I, I don't want to slaughter their names. <laughs> and, uh, Marie Lignot is just incredible. Uh, so I'd love to see you there. And if, if you go to outofchicago.com slash conference, then you can sign up right there and use use my last name Sim S I M to get uh, fifty bucks off the registration. Nice. Where can we find you, Rob? Ah, uh, well, Photo Focus uh, is a good place to find me. Uh, Lightrumors.com is my blog that needs some updating, but that's another place you can you can oh, man. track me down. Um, but yeah, and the Photoshop World, catch me at Photoshop World. I'll be there wearing a staff shirt. I'll be talking in the Peach Bit booth. All right. Because I just released a, um, a Lightroom training for them. Rob, I, and we have we have this we have this aspect in common that we both written for the Snapshot series, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you that do was a lot the, of fun. Yeah, you you do the Lumix cameras, the Panasonic cameras. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, I did the GX7 and GM1. Yeah. yeah, I've done some Nikon cameras for them, and then I did a Learn by Video for them, and you've done I one do. for them. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. Both named Rob, so we're kind of like. Practically twins. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> pretty much twins. Yeah. <laughs> so that's you weren't in the Navy, were you, Knight? <laughs> uh, no. Okay. Right. So we we diverged there, but you right. know, well, maybe that's where we started coming closer together. Was that, right. to that point? For <laughs> Both on the East Coast, that we can go on. So. Yeah. Yeah. It starts with Rob. It all starts with Rob. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so thank you very much for being here with us, and thanks for uh, having me. We'll see you again sometime. Yeah, sounds great. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. See ya.